Hey everybody, and welcome to another JASP tutorial. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you about the regression updates that came in the new version, JASP 0.15, released last month at the time of the time of this video's recording. And so I'm gonna go through a quick regression example and talk, uh, talk about and highlight some of the changes that the devs at JASP have done. So first, let's just quickly open up some data and then I'll talk about some of the changes here. So let's go to open, let's go to the data library and let's go into the regression modules. You can all follow along. You should have all of these once you download and install JASP, uh, both Windows and Mac, as well as Linux and other operating systems. So let's find a linear regression. I think we'll go with album sales. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's open up the data set for album sales. Um, okay. Yeah, actually, you know what? Let's open up another one because I want to make sure, you know what? No, let's do it here. So I'm just going to create a new album sales CSV file for the um, time being, and I'm just going to put it on my desktop. We're just going to call it album sale, and it's going to open up Excel for me because that is my primary. There it is. So we are going to put in gender here. I don't know why it, it didn't do that. And I kind of just want to do zero, zero. Oops. <laughs> let's, I'm, I'm, I'm essentially sorting this data set by, let's see how many are there. There's 200. There's 200. Let's go to 100. Just dragging down here and we'll go at, I know that wasn't exactly half, but that's all right. Uh, and then we're just gonna put ones in the rest of these. All right, because I want a categorical variable. I want this variable to reflect. Okay, that, that was weird. Um, ignore this gender one and now we have this one. Now, so ignore, ignore, I don't know why I did that, but we've got gender here and we've got uh, zeros and ones. And let's just say zero is male and ones are female. It doesn't really matter here. Um, I am just modifying this. And so if you want to follow along, open up the album sales uh, from the data library and either modify the album sales CSV that exists in the data files in the sample data library folder that you can find. I, I think, believe I have a video on where to find those. Um, but if not, then um, you can search for them on your computer or you can just make a new one like I did for this particular video. Okay, so we have the original four uh, variables for this album sales, we have advertisements, we have sales, we have airplay, and we have attractiveness of, I believe, the uh, album cover. And we have gender because why not? It doesn't really, <laughs> doesn't really make sense for this, but I wanted a categorical variable to help us out with some of the new features. So let's go ahead to regression and we are going to do a linear regression. So a couple of things that have been added to regression is we can now bootstrap confidence intervals. Okay, which is really cool. Um, I believe that is under statistics here. So we can, it will now do, so this part in partials has existed you know, since the start of jazz, but now we can do it for our um, estimates, all of our estimates. Um, and so we can bootstrap. I am going to <laughs> give my computer a little bit of, of breathing room there. Um, we're going to do that. Uh, let's get all the rest of the stuff. And so it's, I didn't even put anything in. But now look at what we can do. Look at factors here. So these are the X variables that we're going to put in. And we now have the ability to put in uh, nominal, nominal, and ordinal. Woo! You couldn't do that before. You only had covariates, and this was um, scale and ordinal variables. And so now we can do nominals and uh, ordinals as predictors. So that's awesome. So let's predict sales from adverts, airplay, and uh, oh yeah, so that was a capital gender. So let's put gender in there and then attractiveness as well. So this is going to give us a whole ton of things. And as you can see, it's bootstrapping coefficients right now. <laughs> and I think, I think my computer had some trouble with that. Um, to receive assistance, this is the stack trace. Um, I think the bootstrap got a little bugged out. You know what? I don't want attractive. I, I want attractiveness up here. Actually, yeah. There we go. Uh, because what is what that what that does is, as you see, I have different levels of attractiveness. And if I put it in, I think maybe that might have been the error. You can see that there are um, ten levels of attractiveness. Let's count it as a approximately interval ordinal scale, which means that it just plays it as one continuous variable as opposed to discrete rankings, which you know makes sense in some ways. It doesn't make sense in others, but that's all right. So we have advertisements, we have airplay, and we have attractiveness of the album itself. Um, and we are trying to predict sales. We also want the gender of, we'll say the singer there. And um, you can see here that gender is being placed in, and this is the value for one, not zero. So this is, as I said um, a few minutes ago, uh, one is representative of female. So this is the unstandard coefficient for female, uh, I don't know, singers, whatever. Okay, so that's how it's being represented here. You used to not be able to do that, and now you can in JASP, which is really great because a lot of times we do put gender in as a predictor variable, as a control variable. Sometimes it's the predictor of note and we want to be able to do that. So this is really, um, really, really important. Now, let me try bootstrapping again. Now that, there we go. I think maybe the issue was um, attractiveness 
was put in as a as a discrete factor as opposed to a covariate. So I think the bootstrapping was having a little bit more trouble with it. So let's do a thousand bootstraps. Give my computer a good run for its money here. And it should be able to do this without any problems. There we go. So here are our bootstrapped coefficients, our, our coefficients. Here are our bootstrapped coefficients. Um, so as you can see that we've run this multiple, multiple times. So these are bias uh, corrected uh, accelerated coefficients. So a thousand replications go into creating these unstandardized. And you can see that most of the time they're not very different from what they were on a single computation. So there's that. And then we have the part and partial correlations, although uh, it's supposed to be bootstrapping confidence intervals. So I met, this must be the new addition here, right here, which is, which is great. I love it. We can also change our WLS weights. Um, for here, I don't, I, I don't use WLS weights, um, weighted least squares. So I, I couldn't tell you how the um, new change has made, but there is a lower limit now for this WLS weight. So that's nice. Related error check on covariance matrix of predictors. So let's get the covariance matrix up here and have it. So this is an updated, um, covariance matrix where the error check. So that is if there are issues with our um, coefficients and our covariates and things like that, then it would be marked here. So this inter the intercept model is emitted as no meaningful image can be shown. And so this is the covariance matrix between advertisements and advertisements, airplay and airplay, and um, adver advertisements, gender, emails with the other three, and then attractiveness with all of them. And so these are um, covariants to see whether or not we have issues with that. And so they relax the error check on that, which is, I think, great. And so those are the new updates to linear regression. I think this, this aspect here is a game changer. That's that's a game changer for me um, using JASP for uh, re regression. And what I'd like to see them do is add in a better method for um, doing hierarchical linear regression. That would be nice, um, at least adding and subtracting, not doing um, backward or forward using method specification. I don't mean that. I mean, like, let's add one and see if there's some R change. Let's add two and see if there's some R change. Let, you know, let's or take one away and see what happens to the R squared change. You know, those kinds of things. I would love to see those in this program that would make this a really big powerhouse module for linear regression analysis as far as frequentist uh, stuff is con concerned. So those are the new updates to the linear regression module in JASP 0 0.15. If you like this video, consider leaving a like. If you like this content, consider subscribing for more videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.